Good morning. I'm trying to smile. <laughs> You're trying to. If I say I'm trying to smile, you know, I'm, I'm like really sad inside. So yeah, you're usually all smiles. I know I'm usually all smiles and sometimes it hurts. I think I told you I had a, a college friend of mine that one time told me you're going to get wrinkles because you smile too much. I'm <laughs> well, like, that's a good well, kind of smile. That's I was a good like, kind I thought I had those type of wrinkles and the other way around, you know, I was like, is that a compliment or an insult? I'm not really sure. <laughs> kind of he needs to, he thinks he needs to get down now. Okay. Kitty's like, I want some mama. I want some yummy love mama. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how I wish I wasn't allergic to cats. I know. I love my kitties. I know. I miss my cats so much. And every time I see yours, because mine was a Himalayan. I know. I know. So, I'm like, oh. so, <laughs> so I, um, you know, I, I thought this morning I woke up really early because Scott kept waking up early. And well, I think he says he woke up at five. I think he woke up at 430 to do his quiet time. And of course, he kept moving and, and coming back in. So of course, I'm awake. So I decided to just use myself as the example, as the, as the question of the day. Okay. And of course, my lighting is crazy. I promise you it doesn't flicker in my house, but it flickers on Zoom. I don't know why, but okay. <laughs> but yesterday was a really bad day. Very bad day at home, emotionally, spiritually, mentally. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I was really shocked at my son's behavior. I feel like I've always shared these wonderful, awesome things, but I know no child is perfect. I know my child's not perfect. Um, but yesterday was a really bad day, probably one of the worst days we've ever had. And, and, that, and you know my son, and mm -hmm. I know a lot of people yeah, know my right. son, and he's a, pretty, he's a pretty good kid. But I think I did something wrong. Um, you know, I, I was so shocked at his behavior and the amount of lies that when I put him to bed, I said to him, Rio, I am having a really hard time to forgive you. And I know I need to forgive you. I know it is a choice to forgive you. It is it is what the Bible tells me to do. Um, hold on, now Scott's walking in. <laughs> but it was really... I, 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 I did not want to fake it till you make it. I, I, I did not sense in my spirit that I could even do that. You know, when you, you know, when you can do it, I, I just couldn't do it yesterday. And I was really crushed. And I shared with him, I am so crushed. I'm so disappointed that I'm having a hard time. So I need Jesus to work in mama first. You know, I know you and daddy are going to have your Bible time now and you guys can talk about it. But right now, mama needs Jesus and he needs to talk to me right now in order for me to forgive you. So five, six, I don't even know what time anymore. Um, Scott comes up to me and he's like, hey, you know, before you see Rio, I just want to say I, I don't think you did well. You know, I think that you just taught our son not to forgive because God immediately forgives us and you didn't do that. And I just want to make sure that that you understand that forgiveness is not an emotion. It is a choice. So, of course, now I'm like <sighs> even more of a dagger. You know what I mean? So, yes. If and, I, and I'm like, OK, I hear what you're saying. Perhaps I did wrong. But I did not want to be a fake. And, and I specifically told our son, I need Jesus. And I thought that would be the best thing to tell my son. I need Jesus. I'm not perfect. I need Jesus first before I move on with you. Okay, I'm getting all emotional. <laughs> <laughs> so I know I'm not the only one. I know there's been days that I'm sure as moms, we just want to quit. You know, whatever their circumstance, whether you're a homeschool mom, whether you're not a homeschool mom, there's good days and there's really bad days. Yesterday was a really bad day. So, so <laughs> let's talk about forgiveness. Um, whenever someone does something evil, it creates a separation between people. It creates a barrier. You know, Adam and Eve in the garden, they didn't want to see Jesus. They didn't want to see God coming to talk to them because no, they, they hid 
between them. Sin creates a barrier and it, and it breaks things between people. And so if someone hurts your feelings, the last thing you want to do is go snuggle up to them and talk to them or go hug them. I mean, that's not something you want to do. So you've got a couple issues here. One is your own emotions. And two is the whole topic of forgiveness. And your emotions are totally, totally normal. God made you that way. That's exactly the way he wants you to be because that's how he is. He said, your sins have created a separation between you and your God. You know, these things are broken. That's not the way they're supposed to be. And unless there is a sacrifice, you can't be reconciled. So that's normal. And that is a perfect illustration of what happens if someone sins. There's a separation because um, things are violated. And yes, we do have rights there. You know, there the um, Bible talks about um, sin and talks about the Ten Commandments and there are things that we should not do like disrespect. So yes, we hurt people and it creates a separation. And then that person who is hurt does not want to be around you. That is perfectly normal. I don't want to be around you. <laughs> and sometimes forgiveness does take time in terms of feeling the emotions or feeling like I can let go of this and give it to God. But when that happens, you can externally say, I'm working on forgiving you. I'm in the process that I know I need to, I'm working on it, but I need some time. And I think you did really, I think you did well with your emotions because you recognize them and you realize that you had to get there, but you need to spend some time with the Lord first for him to heal you. So forgiveness is not something you can just do and, and it's gone. It's particularly it's a really right. intense situation. So no, I think you did well. And again, depending on the Lord to help you get there, you can get there. I mean, I've had situations where it's taking me months to walk through forgiveness with particular people, but I'm, I'm saying, Lord, I want to go there. Please help me to get there. I need this. I know I do. And as I do that, he starts showing me things that help me to think about it a little bit differently and to view it differently. But forgiveness means that you do not hold a, you're not going to try to get even. There is not a, um, a fault there that you are going to try to get back at them for that. They're, you're not going to try to um, get justice. You know, you're not going to try to hurt them because of what they did to you. And so, and, I, and it was also the forgiveness of you know, I, I, you know, biblically forgive and truly move forward. Mm -hmm. I wasn't ready to move forward. Right. You know, and that's, that's similar to what you're saying, like the grudge or, or, or that, that grudge or, or the, the, the wanting to get back at you. Okay. The only way for me to get back at my son would be to continue to bring it up over and over and, and over. And you don't want to do that. And you I don't, don't want to do that. that. I, and, and I know that if I would have said, I forgive you, I would have still been because <laughs> <Yeah, yeah, yeah. laughs> it would have just been a word. It would not have truly been the action of it. It would just been a word out of the air, you know, but it also, you know, shows me too, that men and women are totally different. They are different. And a man, does, a man deals with his emotions differently. He does not have a very verbal brain because there's a, the corpus callosum between the two sides of the brain is broken and they cannot process emotion like we do. A lot of times they have to go running or do some exercise to process their emotions. They just don't deal with them well. Mm. We tend to process them by talking about them, by getting them out in the air and, and that sort of thing. And we can handle it a lot better than men do. A lot of times we'll go to a friend and talk about something, but but the point that I want to make is it's okay to make, you know, to say, I'm working on forgiveness. This is a hard thing for me. Um, it, it really hurt me, but I'm, I'm trying. This is, that's okay because you're teaching him what forgiveness is. And Cynthia, for me, you know, and I, I've shared this with my friends. Oh, I'm going to get emotional again. <laughs> I believe the biggest gift that we can give our children is truth right and truth is also our transparency mm -hmm. i am not perfect no i i am hurt i am broken i too fall short from the glory of god just like you mm -hmm. me too and that's been my whole thing of do i want a child to think i'm perfect no no no, no. 
because then that's even more of a harder job to fulfill. But you tell them that you have their best interest at heart, that you're doing what you're doing for their benefit in the long well, something I say, and my mom used to say this, and I, I was just mesmerized when she would say this to me because I'd be like, oh, and I say this to Rio. I say this to my students. I am not training you for me. I am training you for the world. Yes. And I like what you did to me yesterday, you would have been fired <laughs> at a job. Right. Yeah. <laughs> You know, or or you would have had a big fight with your wife if it were the other way, if it was with your wife or with your son or, you know. And and I I, I bring that to him. I'm like, Rio, I, I love that Mimi used to say that to me. And I just grabbed a hold of it because it reminded me of her job and her responsibility with the Lord. That she's not doing it to be mean. She wasn't doing it to be no. a jerk. She also had a role to fulfill with the Lord. And it was a, it's a hard one. I remember mommy telling me, oh, <laughs> Mavian. I remember I was all into my career and my TV and my magazines. And my mom would be like, you know how much you love what you do? And, and you got all these awards and stuff. The hardest career that no diploma, no payment is being a mom. It is hard. And nobody really gets it. Mm -hmm. It's hard. It's hard, but you want to continue loving that child regardless. And even though there's a hurt, you still love him and you still want the best for him. And that's what, if you know, you need to express that to him in time, that this is not going to damage our relationship, but you hurt me. And it's a child that doesn't stop. Nope. It doesn't stop. Even when your kids grow up, you are yep. still mom. you're still mom and your position makes a huge difference because the loss of that, when my mother died, it was a huge loss because I no longer had a mom. I became an orphan. That was very hard. Even as an adult, that was hard. Mm -hmm. So you are always mom. Once a mom, always a mom. Okay. So I just showed everyone how ugly of a crier I am. <laughs> That's okay. You're welcome. You'll well, get I hope, this. I hope this helps a lot of moms out there. I hope it does. I hope it does. I'll see you next week. Okay.